Yeah. So once again, I welcome you all to this uh, talk on Ge Geek Night this evening. And today we have uh, Sudhan, uh, Padmanabhan, and uh, Alain talk about uh, how we built our Geek Breed Bot. So without further ado, we'll start our session. Yeah, you can take it forward from here, Sudhan. Okay, thank you, Harini, actually. So hello, everyone. Thank you for joining this uh, uh, presentation or a talk. Uh, I can say it's a talk, okay. So this is going to be uh, more interactive. So we plan to have a two different uh, thing, actually, two different part. So first part is going to be like a hundred percent interactive. So each and every slide uh, or each and every uh, thing you are looking at, uh, please talk about it. If you have something to say, please talk about it. So it's like a purely uh, depends upon your opinion and depends upon your ideas. We are going to build the conversation. So that is going to be the first half. The second half is going to be uh, how we came up with the ideas and part the grid, but we are going to show the how we build it and how, how the idea came up and uh, what are the different things uh, we are doing as a community, IoT community. So these are the two different parts. Okay. So without any further delay, let me share my screen and go into the presentation mode. And uh, as I am in a presentation mode, I cannot able to see if you are uh, have any questions or if you raise your hands. So if you have any questions, please unmute yourself and uh, ask your questions. Or if you have anything to say, please unmute yourself as well as you can able to interact with me. Okay, cool. Uh, everybody okay? Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so IoT and our imaginations. The first uh, part is going to be IoT and our imaginations. Uh, what what came to your mind mind when you think about this uh, particular headlines? Any ideas? No, nothing. Controlling everything with our fingertips. A fingertips, yeah, cool. Uh, like a, a thousand years from now, cool, very cool, actually, cool. Okay, so uh, if no one have anything to say, maybe I can move to the next slide. So basically, Internet of Things is uh, connecting uh, things to the internet, right? So uh, internet is evolving very rapidly, and uh, till now we don't have a, a like a fixed definition for internet, Internet of Things, actually. So my definition is going to be when you can able to get the inputs from non-living things, right? Uh, using some sensors that is called, uh, and you can able to uh, use this data to make some decisions, right? Uh, that is called Internet of Things, according to me, right? So that is my definition. If you have uh, any other definition of what do you think about, uh, whether everyone agrees with your definition or uh, do you have any other different opinion? I take it as a no. Okay, so why we need Internet of Things? How we need IoT basically? So uh, what, are, what are the different things you can able to take it from the picture actually? Different uh, insights. Come on guys, this is going to be purely interactive session. And if you are not going to talk, it's going to be very boring. Yeah, one place to control the many devices. Uh, like a one place to control many devices or uh, something else you can able to see. Uh, we can control from the different devices like smartphone, tablet or computers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, devices can yeah. be controlled different things. Yeah, that's a control. Uh, that's a control part. Uh, okay, that we don't dive, dive deep dive into that. Uh, everything is connected. Everything is connected. Yeah, one good thing actually. So how many devices are connected actually? One bottom there are like six. six devices connected. Five devices yeah. to the internet. Yes, true. So we have a three persons, but the devices connected are more than the persons, right? That's the context I want to place it here. So right now in our everybody and everyone's home, we have a more number of devices that's actually connected to the internet, right? So eventually we are letting a lot of data out of course, we are letting a lot of data out. So that's uh, how can we make use of all these things. So to make use of all these data, uh, we are letting out, uh, we can able to uh, include some IoT part. Uh, it depends upon uh, uh, the device, right? For example, if your AC is connected to the, your, uh, 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 your Wi-Fi, 
you can able to control it through Alexa right now, right? Or most of the ACs have that feature right now. So all these things are interconnected, right? Now the machines can able to talk to themselves without our involvement. That's true, right? So basically I explained everything, you know, whatever we discussed, everything in uh, separate lines. Here. So these are the things. And in the next slide, uh, we are, I, I will be posting some problem statements. Okay. So the idea is the IoT and our imagination is meaning that uh, we want to kick start uh, thinking in IoT perspective. So we face a lot of issues in our day-to-day -day life as well as uh, both personal as well as professional life. But uh, all the ways of, are we thinking in the right way to solve the problem? So are we thinking in a better, so how are we thinking in a better way to solve the problem? So whether we can able to think in IoT perspective. So because right now we have a software perspective and then uh, pers to handle the personal problem, we have uh, some kind of uh, other perspectives, right? Like a, a mentor kind of a mental perspective, right? So if we have the IoT perspective to solve the problem, are we thinking in that perspective or not, right? To kickstart uh, this, all this thinking, I will be posting some problems and uh, uh, I will be explaining it. So what is the problem? And uh, you, you, are, you should be coming up with the solutions. What are the different solutions you have? And me, you, the thing is, I have some solutions. I will be explaining it right after the problem, but uh, you may be having a better solution than me, right? So uh, we are going to discuss all the things after this, okay? Yeah, what are you, what are you seeing here actually? Uh, okay. <laughs> Anybody? Uh, autumn season uh, with the, all the leaves fallen. Okay, autumn season with all the leaves fallen. So basically, it's a, a dry tree, we can say, right? Yeah. Okay, dry tree. So what is, what is the need for this? Okay, what is the need for this tree, actually? Water, rain. Water, rain, true. So uh, whether... Uh, we can able to do something about it the answer is correct actually water uh, yeah so much of water for a single tree but uh, apologies i can able, cannot able to find the better pictures okay so how we are going to get this water to this particular tree right uh, we because as we can, can able to see this so uh, trees in very remote place yeah go on somebody stop it go on Okay, no idea. So what happens uh, if uh, if the tree can able to uh, let you know that I need water? The, okay, so any other any other idea? Any other thinking? No, no. Okay, cool then. So let me explain uh, how it's going to be possible. So this is going to be the soil moisture sensor. So what this uh, sensor will do is this will uh, detect the uh, uh, water content or uh, uh, moisture level in your soil and uh, it will send out the data whether uh, a particular level is reached or not, whether the particular, whether the, so whether the water is not there for uh, quite a period of time, like uh, for the more than three days, if the water is not there, it's all thing we can able to programmable. Okay, these all these things can able to programmable, and uh, uh, we have some kind of a router or uh, some kind of a motor where uh, there is a place between uh, your uh, actual water because it it can be around 100 to 200 meters away from the water source, right? You can you don't want to water it every day. You want to water it on particular some like uh, in the period of three to four days, right? So to do all these things, we have this soil moisture sensor and uh, depends upon the data we are getting from here, we can able to uh, like switch on the motor and switch off the motor to plant, uh, to water the whole plant, right? Uh, but maybe somebody thinking this is kind, this kind of over-engineered for, uh, uh, for, the, for the normal water thing. Uh, think in the perspective where uh, uh, there is a, like a, a hundreds of trees, right? In a remote place. You, plant, you planted hundreds of trees and uh, you cannot able to water it 
every day yeah, of course uh, we are not we don't have time for that right now as we are in a very busy schedule we don't have the time for this so if we can implement something like this uh, the watering the tree is not going to be a burden it's going to be automated and uh, every tree can able to get the water at the correct point in time and it will grow so it will not depend on you anymore right whether the tree need water or not it will be decided by this sensor and uh, the water the water will be switched on automatically depends upon the sensor of course we can able to uh, switch off the motor uh, depends upon the sensor uh, sensor data again right otherwise we can able to think of like a particular time period like uh, uh, the motor will be switched on for uh, 20 minutes and then it should be switched off something like that we can able to we that's all comes under the logic again we all very good at logic right we can able to figure it out the problem is uh, uh, we have to think in the perspective this thing can be able to doable this thing can be able to doable or this thing can be able to automated using different sensors as well as uh, uh, different hardware parts motors uh, servo motors other things right so the final uh, output is going to be something like this so it will be uh, pinched into the soil and depends upon the data we can able to do lot of things right so yeah go on if you have any different perspective or any different uh, if you want to challenge me go on no problem okay i do i i thought i heard something okay cool okay what do you think about this building okay so lot of resources you generate that keep yeah, the building up and running yes true true uh, anything special about the sunlight you can able to think of any solution depends upon that sun is producing a lot of heat, yeah so are you expecting something like uh, replacing solar power uh that's one thing actually the other thing is uh, utilizing solar power we can able to generate power right uh, i i'm thinking about something uh, depends upon the sunlight uh, or we can able to control something else which uh, which reduce the consumption of power through windows solar panels uh, through windows uh, your you mean uh, not exactly so something else something else actually solar panel One... light controlled uh, light control like solar panel that can be controlled based on the sunlight if the sunlight in the east mm -hmm. then it will move to the east and if is the based then move the okay, according so direction. yeah maybe let me let me put this uh, problem in a different uh, a different perspective then so of course uh, the sunlight uh, let's take this as a morning 8 o'clock so in the morning 8 o'clock uh, the right side of the building is uh, fully the fully covered with the sunlight right so obviously the temperature on the right side of the building will be high right so can you think of something else right now because uh, uh, this is a like very huge building holding the building temperature on the right hand side during the day or during yes. the morning can be uh, we can uh, have a much lower temperature rather than having that on the right side of the building then it can be controlled exactly true okay, so, so it depend we Yeah, go on. Sorry, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, okay. So if we can able to place some uh, uh, like a temperature sensor outside the building, right? At uh, any uh, like one or two places, it's enough actually. So if we place uh, both the places, and if we can able to uh, detect that the temperature is high in this uh, in this particular space, uh, then we can able to manipulate the uh, the flow of uh, ACs, right? And the flow of AC should be very high. Uh, in the right side of the building during the morning and during the evening the flow of ac should be very high on the left side of the building i mean we don't have to place it on the outside right we can do it from the inside too of course it, yeah but... that's yeah that's also doable actually depends upon the yeah that's also doable because uh, anyway the like the, the light will be passing through the windows and it will be heating up the bright side of the uh, building true agreed okay any other thing you can think of uh, any other thing uh, because this is the uh, normal thing of what me and uh, everyone thinks right now 
any other problem you see in this building because uh, we can able to talk about that one as well. Abhishek has something in the chat. Abhishek has something in the chat. Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, it's uh, electronic sunblinds are electronically controlled window tint. Okay, okay. Uh, window tint. Okay, so uh, Abhishek, uh, if you can able to talk, I don't know whether, oh uh, yeah, you can able to talk, right? Uh, can you able to explain because I really don't understand the second part. Controlled window tint on the, how we are going to do that. Uh, what's the benefit? Uh, Hey, uh, so I mean, there is this thing called electrochromatic uh, window tint. I have just heard mm -hmm. uh, re recently about it. Uh, mm -hmm. Apparently, you can control the tint of your window, you know, make mm -hmm. it uh, darker or make it, you know, let more light in um, oh. based on, you know, electronic input, right? So if you have a light sensor, you place it somewhere and then base, if it's like too much light, you can mm -hmm. make it much more darker and then you know, that can artificially control your temperature. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Right. Super. Yeah. That's, uh, that's also one problem, right? When we have a uh, too much of light in our office space, we have a lot of issues, right? The temperature will be gone down very easily, uh, gone up, sorry, gone up very easily. And then, uh, we have to, uh, sit in a correct position to take, uh, take up the online calls. Otherwise, if we have a uh, light from our background, uh, then if you switch on the videos, that will be horrible, right? Uh, that's kind of a cool. Actually, I never thought of this one. Well, good one, Abhishek, actually. Hey, thanks. Yeah. So let me, let me go for the next two problems. So this is actually a real problem happened in, uh, I think, Bangladesh. Yeah, Bangladesh office space. So can you, can anybody let me, uh, let, let me discuss the problem first. What is the problem here? Right, because so 25 people are dying uh, and this is the office space. So, because of fire. Maybe smoke right, detectors uh, were not there. Uh, smoke detectors were not there. Okay, right, yeah. So, uh, no fire safety. Yeah, that's also possible. But uh, let's consider that all the things are there, right? Uh, smoke detectors are there. And uh, uh, why why the people are cannot able to uh, leave from the building when there is a fire? Emergency we lack of emergency drill practices. True, the lack of emergency drill practices that can be one, but uh, that's a practice we have to do. Uh, are we are we missing something? Maybe the doors were locked by yeah. default. Maybe there was power outage and the mm. doors were by default closed in that that. Uh, position or what what's the term yeah true true Omkar. actually that's that's uh, that's going to be the one important uh, uh, scenario right when there's a fire in the office and the fire doors cannot we cannot able to open the exit the emergency exit right that's going to be the very bad scenario right because uh, we usually practiced everything uh, as a fire drill we have to go to that particular door and we have to get down in particular direction right so if the door is blocked, then we really don't know where to go because we should not use lift and we should not use uh, some other uh, uh, methodologies. And uh, this is the one we practiced usually, right? So do you have any solution for it? Right now, let us assume that uh, the smoke, uh, smoke sensors and other fire uh, electrical things are there and the door is locked, right? So do you have any sense or any solution for this one? Anybody think of any kind of a solution? Yeah, so if the emergency doors are always openable from inside, mm -hmm. uh, so people will use it to go out on the right, uh, not the other way. So if someone wants to escape, they can always manually do it. There is no uh, control, like whether there is electricity, power, and if, even if there is nothing, the default mm -hmm. state is uh, from inside, it's always open. Okay, from inside it's always open. From the outside it's not be opened, so no people can able to come in through the door. But yeah. uh, everybody can able to go out through the through the door. Okay, so let me put the problem on uh, like a bit more. Uh, this is kind of a joke, but uh, let me <laughs> enhance the problem. Then, uh, what happens if there is a fire in the exit door itself, right? Uh, some kind of electricity things breaks out, uh, and there is an electric lines going on uh, through the door and. Uh, uh, you have the fire burning, the, the door is burning. 
Hmm. Okay. More than so, one emergency exit options. Yes, two. Think in the perspective of uh, try to get solution in IoT perspective, right? Or try to get something should be automated or something should be uh, depends upon some incident, some sensing thing, something should be happened. This kind of a thing. Right. So Send the alert to fire station so that we can get help. Okay. Nitin, you, you have something, right? Uh, so uh, here if you see a lot of changes that are related to the power source, right? So rather than depending upon the whole your main source of electricity, why mm. don't we have something which is battery controlled or very particularly controlled by that? So it's a fire, like fire ex like emergency existing, it's not going to take a lot of power. So mm -hmm. we just don't need a, a lot of direct electricity for it. I mean, I have a little bit knowledge in that. So currently we have devices which are, you know, definitely shifts and uh, IoT devices which flips to the battery resource mm -hmm. as soon as mm -hmm. the power goes out. So yeah, we can try something that for the emergency exits itself, mm -hmm. I mean, or the smoke detectors itself. Mm -hmm. If that is the issue, whatever the issue can be, we can directly target that out using those okay okay uh something and from dk uh, uh, yeah, yeah sorry sorry, Nathan, go. sorry. Uh, nothing like uh, i think somebody did mention sending out the alert so yeah that is also very well okay okay uh, okay sir open yeah and then put some chat actually so then yeah test protocols to automatically probe uh, which gets uh, uh which gets or openable right or something like that yeah uh, we can depends upon some data from the sensors we are automatically opening the all the exits uh, that's what you mentioned right dk yeah um, even if not uh, like it, it would be good if if, if they open automatically uh, even if mm -hmm. they are not able to open at least uh, it should notify uh, which ones are operational so the indicators which uh, tell us uh, to go it's like mm -hmm. checking mechanism. So before, uh, let's say, for example, before our flights take off, they first mm -hmm. uh, rotate everything and check whether they are functional or not. So all the mm -hmm. essential things. So it's like periodically checking it or in case of fire also, uh, just uh, instantaneously checking uh, whether they are open or not if possible open it as well that will be also added advantage okay okay that's really something new actually so uh check so check the openable part and if uh, some door is blocked by itself i cannot be able to open it automatically then uh, redirect the people to the some other door right so redirect the redirect the exit yeah. emergency exit so that something else by some indicators that's really good option actually so still we are missing uh, all these things are there actually so let uh, take the uh, uh that's a proper office space and uh, so much sensor is there everything is there so still we have some this happened and uh, we lost 25 people in that office space right so uh, what are the other things maybe uh, let me give me some my solution this can be a bit huge but uh, i think uh, in the cost of 25 life right this is not uh, that huge okay so I have a three different solution for this one. So first is a computer vision. So uh, all of our office space will have a uh, will have a camera, right? We'll have they have a cameras, and uh, depends upon that we can able to detect how many people are there inside the particular floor, right? So we can able to uh, let the fire workers know uh, these are the people that are in the particular floor as well. So they cannot able to risk their life. Uh, uh, send, uh, going in, so in the wrong place, right? They have to go into the correct place and get rescued. The people should be rescued from the correct place, right? These computer vision, we, uh, we know, we know all the, the, we can able to detect different things. So what happens if we can able to install this uh, inside our office space, which can able to detect the people. And uh, in the case of emergency, it can able to detect the people and give us a count at least. So how these many people are uh, blocked in this particular floor and uh, uh, these are the, yeah, these, some data should be given to the firefighters, right? So this is the one. So we have uh, some contradiction in the computer vision. The thing is, uh, what happens if the flames are too high, like uh, too high and uh, I, the, the camera can able to, cannot able to detect the person other side of the fire, right? Uh, to address the solution, we have this motion sensor. This motion sensor is like a, a very costly one, uh, like an industrial standard, not a one we used to, to play with our uh, tinkering with, right? That's not all. This is like a industrial standard motion sensor. 
uh, this can able to detect our motion uh, to the, to be very precise actually. So if we can able to install uh, this to our office space, uh, combining computer vision and motion sensor, we can able to come to a correct conclusion that the numbers can be very accurate, right? So these are two things we can we are uh, talking about after the fire. Once the fire happened, we want to get the numbers. We want to get the people to the correct place. We want to rescue the people and other things, right? Uh, we never talked about uh, switching off the fire. Like uh, we never talked about how the fire will be gone from the particular place. Uh, for the example, if the door is uh, on fire, we cannot able to escape from the particular floor, right? So to address that, we have a uh, I I think about the third one, the drone fire excuse. So we know it actually, we seen it in some place. Uh, we know drones are there, we know the fire exists are there and we can able to uh, use the fire exit throw zone. We know all these things, right? Uh, let us take an example. When there is a floor, your drone can able to uh, come up when there's a fire and uh, the first priority is going to be, it will go to the particular exit and put the fire off, right? The second priority is going to be that the people are there, that should not be fired. At least uh, throw the exit way, the, from the starting to the exit way, that should not be any fire. So this is the priority for the zone. So the drone will be switching off fire in all these places. Right? So this is one This is one thing. Uh, you may think that this will be too costly and uh, uh, the implementation is very tedious, all these things. But the cost of life and the insurance company as well as the companies who is paying for the uh, people who dead, right? Uh, uh, then the implemented cost is a bit cheaper actually. Well, the, the cost of 25 people, life, and then uh, anyway, you have to pay uh, pay something. So the company obviously will be paying something. So considering all these things, when you can you can able to implement all these things, so, uh, that is kind of a cheaper for me. Uh, maybe you have a different opinion, but uh, uh, these are the three things uh, which came came up in my mind actually. Okay, I, I am actually feasibility question around the drone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go on, go on. Yeah. Because you know, having a drone fire extinguisher would have you know constraint on the capacity. Uh, sorry, actually, your voice is not clear. I think uh, I mean, uh, it into... will put mm. a constraint on the capacity of how much amount of extinguisher that it can carry, right? Yes, uh, but uh, if we can able to switch off the fire in particular, uh, the exit place, right? Uh, maybe it, it it's all doable. Uh, uh, let, let us take an example, right? Uh, your drone have a drone can able to pick up a different fire execution. That's doable. We cannot able to, we don't say that uh, that's not doable. It's uh, all about the R&D we have to do and the different, uh, me uh, different uh, building mechanism we have to follow. Right? So... Uh, it's yeah, it's possible. Uh, not right now, but uh, with the different R and Ds, with the uh, help from people like uh, you and people like everyone who is in the meeting, that's doable, right? I'm already taking five minutes from the other people, so let me go a bit quicker in the next slide. So, extremely sorry for that. So the problem here is a. Uh, uh, the illegal people are cutting off the trees uh, in a remote location. And uh, uh, what, what is the solution? What is the solution you can able to give for it? Like the fence no. which has the sense of power, uh, like we can sense it uh, mm -hmm. uh, like... Um, at the boundaries of the land and uh, if somebody wants to enter then it will be kind of a shock provided to him or her kind of thing okay come some kind of a shock you want to <laughs> okay cool. yeah it will be like not uh, like a deadly one but uh, you can't just uh, hold it and uh, jump onto the land kind of thing okay. the fencing with the power uh, yeah yeah the, the okay the power fencing like uh, fencing with electricity right okay someone uh me Miraj, okay install gps chips in trees and monitor that uh tree uh won't be any moment any movements in the trees any movements in the trees actually um yeah that's good but how uh, okay so i installed a gps and uh, the person chopped it off and there is a moment uh in during the movement what we have to do we send some data, right? We have to transfer it somewhere to get something to be 
डन राइट मीरज कनप कनप प्रति राइट कनप प्रति आम आई अंडरस्टैंड यूर इनपुट करेक्टली और आई एम अंडरस्टैंड स्ट्रॉन्ग if trees are chopped up then it has to be moved to next location okay you want to catch the person who is uh, chopping the tree okay so anyway the trees are chopped the problem i want to the solution i want to give is uh, before chopping the tree i want the people to be uh, do i want to do something not after the uh, chopping because oh, yeah yeah we can install uh, some cameras uh, and uh, based on some their the thermal detection we can mm -hmm. detect uh, humans and uh, if we detect any human uh, sign we can send mm -hmm. some alert to control station or something like that okay super uh, super rajesh sorry actually the that's good actually and one problem here is uh, it's it's in a remote place uh, let us take uh, the forest uh, uh, the remote forest where we barely have network connection right uh, it's very bad to have a uh, internet connection during that place all these places right i uh, where devices cannot connect to internet i mean maybe they can connect through bluetooth right uh bluetooth ranges are uh, very little right yes. we cannot able to hmm? radio waves or uh, triggering Ooh. alarm ah 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 radio waves radio waves now you now everyone thinking in the perspective right uh, we are thinking for now there is a constraint that that's in the remote place so uh okay so what happened uh, the, the, uh, this actually they have a ready made solution ready made solution since they already uh, solution is it and uh, they are using it right now uh, not in a radio based format but in a uh, telephone signal format okay so maybe i can uh, give you the hints okay so sorry i missed this slide okay we have to inform to the uh, forest department obviously uh install a camera and uh, train ml algorithm to observe standing trees and okay okay so what they did actually give me a second let me play it or this is for uh, uh hari is it okay if we can able to extend like a 5 to 10 minutes right uh yeah you can that should not be okay a... okay then thank you uh so then uh, we are not able to hear the audio Okay, extremely sorry. Let me share it on more once again with the. Uh, we actually practiced to, to do this, but we I forgot. Sorry. In San Francisco, USA, we found the. You can able to hear, right? Yes. Okay. In San Francisco, USA, we found a guy who gave cell phones to trees. Hi, Nas Daily. I'm Topher White. Topher was an engineer who was traveling in the forest one day when he saw a group of men chopping off trees. They're called illegal loggers, and they chop off rare trees to sell their wood on the black market. But when he went to alert the police, they said they already knew about these loggers and had a tough time catching them because the forest is so loud they could never hear them chopping down trees. So he. thought why not build a device that will let the trees call for help like a cell phone him and his team rainforest connections started taking old phones and tweak them so they would automatically alert the police whenever there were chainsaw sounds he would put these phones on top of trees in weatherproof boxes the forests can't protect themselves but at least now thanks to tofer cell phones they can just call us up whenever they need our help that's one minute see you tomorrow okay So, what do you think about this solution? It's really nice. Really nice. Okay. I have question. So, I mean, yeah, they're kind of using the um, you know, uh, noise as a receptor, I guess, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, that particular kind of noise, they're probably capturing the wavelength. Or true. Yeah, we can able to. measuring yeah. it in tv i don't know how they are like of course this not explanatory that much but uh, let's assume there is some natural calamity and that is kind of producing the same level of db noise what does that mm -hmm. how would you differentiate okay yeah. so there is a kind of a storm inside the forest and too much of rain over there and if the chopping is going on that particular time how we are going to do that right that's question Let's say there are animals running, producing the okay. same amount of noise. I mean, okay. that's not a very a logger doesn't 
produce a very high uh, db noise right somebody yes, said sir. also positive for that yeah okay so let us uh, okay let me give me some example what i we can able to think of immediately so uh, we have this chain the saw chain sound right uh, what happened if we i can able to collect uh, 10 to 20 different uh, saw chains and uh, when i hear when i can, when the sense when i can able to sense the similar sound i just match it with all these 10 sounds right i i don't know whether this is going to be uh, possible or this is this is a uh, we have some other uh, uh, some other things can be able to do but this is the thing i can able to immediately think of uh, for your uh, question actually Nitin. okay so i mean that is kind of depend depending on the you know particular amplitude wavelength that is being produced by the saw chain and you know uh yeah true the uh, because this is going to be the chains are made up of uh, steels right but uh, uh, when the two when animals are running it's uh, it's a uh, between the earth and the legs of the animals the sound may be varying but it uh, depends upon the frequencies mostly actually okay okay uh, i know nitin is not uh, <laughs> uh, not convinced but uh, yeah it's it's okay not to convince because then people can able to uh, go and think in a different perspective right uh, we are kicking starting the different uh, ideas actually sorry and uh, this is the last and final problem uh, that's it i may be finishing very soon Okay, so this is a, a cable car actually uh, happened last year in Italy uh, where uh, people like 12 people are died and only one survivor, which is a five year old boy, right? So uh, the main problem is the cable as well as the brake is, uh, uh, is not uh, good. It's actually, it's broke the cable as well as the brake. So what do you think? Uh, what do you think as an immediate solution for this? One? If you have anything, anything, Similar. Okay, so uh, sorry, extremely sorry, I cannot able to, maybe I can uh, install camera. Okay, proactive maintenance. Yeah, that's cool. Proactive maintenance there. Uh, that's kind of a, that is a lot of issues. But if we don't maintain it properly and uh, something happened, right? Uh, we cannot able to let the people, we cannot able to predict everything correctly. So some installation like airbag to prevent super mirage because I do have the same, I do have the same uh, solution for this one. Maybe let me explain my solution. This is going to be the accelerometer. So this will detect the whether you are falling or not. So it depends upon that. Uh, my idea is going to be uh, building the airbag for the whole uh, like a whole car itself, not to particular anything for the whole thing. So uh, it depends on, because right now we have a uh, cars which can able to uh, bring the airbags outside of the cars, right? So if we can able to simulate something like this for the whole cable car, then uh, we can able to avoid uh, this. Uh, not we, the injuries will be there, but uh, uh, I really doubted the uh, how 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 deeper the injuries, how severe the injuries are when we have the airbags right and uh, yeah thank you for your time uh, i think there won't be any questions and uh, the next part is going to be talking about the greed bot uh, if you have any question please post me uh, my name is sudan and you can be able to talk to me in any time uh, in thought talks so mail no problem and uh, yeah over to you Bhatmanabhan and kalai extremely sorry for the delay uh -huh, no problem sudan actually yeah Okay, that was a nice, uh, well uh, presented. Okay, uh, so the second part, uh, you know, so the second part will be handled by myself and Batmanabhan actually. Okay, so uh, so what we have seen uh, till now is the uh, the real time problems which we have and the thought process of solutions. Okay. So we have different perspectives. So, okay. So we as a company, as a community, uh, being at a position to provide solutions. So we wanted to uh, convert them into this imagination into action. So that's where the idea of this IoT community in Tartox has originated. And we have uh, started implementing into actions. So, you know, so that's what... Uh, 
this grid bot is all about you know so we'll uh, start with our how we came up with this grid bot version 1.0 okay maybe next slide so yeah so this idea ideology part so you know as a community we started discussing when we wanted to convert uh, we wanted to do something that is marketable that is scalable that is reliable uh, so we wanted to convert it into actions so we needed a starting point since you know we uh, all people does not have a great expertise uh, a detailed uh, r and d uh, knowledge on this iot part so we wanted to start from very scratch actually so that's where the idea of grid bot uh, uh, pitched in so we have many products we 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 have discussed about many products that us that that is very uh, highly performable uh, but you know we wanted to uh, very start uh, from the very scratch actually so that's the first part of this ideation and the second one is the uh, as a community you know we have a non circuit members in our community so we don't want to overwhelm so we wanted to invest more time uh, in this very starting point we wanted to invest more time in the people and learning uh, so it's not like something uh, it's not like something uh, in a college maybe a final year project that comes in uh, we do a demo and then give it back it should be a long running project so we wanted to invest more time in the uh, people and learning and another thing was why grid bot so it can be some other thing which can provide the about to uh, ideologies so we wanted to attract a community a very active community of our thought of people so there are people who are very active and they wanted to do something and they are for they are looking for a spark actually so we wanted to attract those people and bring it to the community for uh, uh, bring it to the community and we wanted to do a great things actually so and these three points and of course that should be fun so this is the whole idea of why we wanted to do a grid bot rather than any other product okay so this is how we want we we kick started this so the next one so oh cool so uh, so this is something like the expectation setting slide actually so the expectation is not if you are uh, expecting uh, okay you know in future you know this is the our expectation as well something the grid bot version 10 maybe something like this which you know comes uh, uh, walks and comes to the office and give us uh, welcomes us and everything so what we at version 1.0 has done okay uh, you can see that actually before moving into the uh, how part you can see the what part so you know uh, so this is our grid bot you know uh, whenever someone comes to our office reception it welcomes us so this is the kind of you know our very basic uh, actionable uh, one point and a kind of mvp so we wanted to make it as a product okay so the next slide okay so this is our grid bot that we have made so we'll go to the how part next okay cool so next comes the uh, interesting part okay so we have decided some okay we have decided something okay we are going to build a grid bot so what are the things that has to be done so the brainstorming part comes in so the first part is to detect a motion of a people you know so that's the first uh, input part and a speaker of course and something that waves the hands so these are the three business use cases that we have decided so one is uh, to accept uh, to detect a person and the second one is to greet a person with an action and a an voice so these are the business use cases that we have found so to sense that okay to sense that we have come up uh, with uh, as i earlier as i said we invested more time in researching it's not um, 
we pick up a sensor and do it today and we face some issues so it's not like uh, we have done everything uh, 100% a solution but we wanted to uh, make it uh, 100% uh, certain that we are doing something uh, a reliable one okay so we discussed with uh, there was an another option of infrared sensors actually uh, maybe a pir sensors so we had a discussion on which sensor to go and we come up with the uh, ultrasonic sensor okay i will before moving into that maybe if uh, someone uh, is uh, new to the iot community so i will basically uh, say the difference between an ultrasonic sensor and an uh, ir sensor so what is this ultrasonic sensor is going to do is it is going to emit a sound waves uh, via as via a port and it is going to receive a, uh, the waves that is going to be generated by this ultrasonic sensor is going to be hit to a object and then comes back to the sensor actually so the distance the time taken of these waves is calculated and this this is how this ultrasonic sensor works and a similar way the same principle the ir sensors what it is going to do is uh, it is going to use the ir energy okay so after i research you know after this infrared rays uh, it has some uh, obstacle factors uh, that is the light variations can give us the false positive informations uh, though this is going to be in a closed setup only we, we 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 went for a discussion okay this this motion sensor is may have the chances since it's also reliable may have a chance of false positives so we went to a more reliable solution of the ultrasonic sensor so that's the first part actually and then a speaker so obviously we need a speaker actually and then a servo motor so this servo motor you know uh, if you have seen in the video there is a hand waving at you uh, waving at us so that is via a servo motor you know this servo motor what it is going to do is uh, it has a special capability where uh, you can inform a precision angle to that motor via a digital pin okay so that a servo motor is going to do uh, going to turn to that degree only okay so for example i say via a command to the servo motor hey servo motor turn right 30 degree okay something like that it's uh, it's not turn right actually it's uh, 30 degree turn 30 degree turn 90 degree turn 180 degree so this kind of precision this servo motor gives actually so we had an options uh, as i as i always said we had an options of stepper motor as well so due to the factors of having uh, an uh, you know uh, we uh, we uh, today it's something a uh, very lightweight object a uh, placed on uh, placed on above the servo motor so tomorrow it may be heavy weight heavy weight so we wanted some high torque so the stepper motor behaves also in a similar way uh, but it's not like a uh, it's not like angles it's like a fixed steps actually so if you can if you have time you can google the differences of the uh, stepper and the servo uh, servo motor so obviously the servo motor why we chose was it has high torque and a little reliable high speed actually so that's the reason uh, we went for the servo motor so these three part sensors speaker a servo motor and an esp32 this is you know part of this uh, system so this is the microcontroller uh, board which we were using uh, for this uh, development so this esp32 you know uh, this is uh, something uh, okay if someone is already uh, known uh, into iot community you would have known about uh, arduino you know boards okay so that's where uh, many people uh use this uh frequently we use this uh, boards uh, that arduino you know boards actually so you know if you wanted a different solution that is relate that is comparatively cheaper and with an inbuilt bluetooth and wifi module you can go for this esp32 
it is highly performance than based on the articles which we have studied it is it gives high performance than the arduino uno boards so we went for this esp32 dev kits actually so that's the one part and this lm386 amplifier module so this microcontroller you know this is going to give us 5 volt so we wanted to give it to a big speaker that has a big not that big maybe 8 ohms uh, holding speaker so we wanted to amplify that sound so that's where this amplifier module comes in so this amplifier module is a combination simply a combination of an operational amplifier with a variable resistor actually where you can google its circuits actually it it is ready madely available in the markets we can get it in the electronics uh, store as lm386 which is widely used for esp32 uh, speaker connection actually so these are the components which we have used on which we have used so maybe the next slide okay so this is the uh, uh, okay sorry for this no you know we are very i'm a little bit uh, bad at diagram so but you know this uh, gives will give you a clear picture of uh, what and how a basic connection ideology is so uh, you know not worry about the pin configurations so it depends on the esp32 kit uh, which you buy from the market actually there will be a slight variation of the pin configurations so you can buy from the market and you can google it with the specific uh, serial number where we can get the exact pin configuration for now assume it as in the left side everything is an input pin and in the right side everything is a output pin so you know this is the structure of an ultrasonic sensor the top one where we have four pins one is vcc and the trigger and the echo and the ground pin actually so these are the two points one is going to generate a sound waves and another one is going to receive the sound waves actually so this is how this ultrasonic sensor works as i already said so we uh, as it requires a 5 volt vcc and a ground point for this uh, ultrasonic sensor so that we need to give so it will be uh, start producing uh, sound waves from that point in a loop okay so this is about the ultrasonic sensor this trigger pin is going to be connected to any of the input pins of the esp32 microcontroller and this echo pin is going to be connected to uh, again any of this uh, adc pins of this uh, microcontroller so this is how this connection of this uh, ultrasonic sensor and this works and this have only four pins so to be exact this has only four pins and coming to this servo motor servo motor has only three pins attached to it if you get into the market you will get three pins one which is going to be a, uh, going to be a digital write pin which is going to which through which the microcontroller is going to say to the servo motor hey turn to turn 30 degrees that is one pin and as always the vcc and the ground pin that is the power pin to the servo motor so uh to recall this ultrasonic sensor is a four pin device and the servo motor is a three pin device so uh, uh, every this both the devices has vcc and ground pin and this has this data write pin so these two components we have used and the, and then comes the lm386 uh module so you know uh, right if we wanted to again write this information uh, to this operational amplifier module so we have written an output pin to this operational amplifiers module a digital write pin you can see the specification pin number in the lm386 circuit uh, numbers actually so as always we have to give the uh, vcc and the ground pin and the output of this of lm386 module will be connected to the uh, uh, speaker actually so this is the basic circuit diagram uh, which we have decided actually so any questions till now you can break me okay before that okay quickly maybe we'll uh, discuss about the challenges as well so okay okay uh, what we as a community people thought was okay we have decided a circuit we have components we will be connecting it and everything will be working as we expect that's the ideology we had but you know uh, 
uh, electricity and electronics is something invisible so it does magic always so there is always some challenges uh, coming into so the first part you know this uh, basic uh, which seems to be easy in the circuit diagram uh, so it's uh, actually a, a two pin only so from lm386 output you will be having a two wires coming out which you will be connecting to the speakers two points so this is a direct connection so we had everything in place code was running fine uh, we actually troubleshooted by having a led light in in place of speaker actually so we what we done was we have connected it everything and the speaker uh, didn't say anything so we was we were uh, we were you know we were uh, wanted to debug that so we removed that uh, speaker from that place and we connected an led and tested whether our code works fine our input works fine all those stuffs so after confirming that so we found out that there is a problem in between this lm386 and the speaker part so then we pitched in and we again gone through this uh, uh, some research and we understood this lm as if you have uh, listen uh, if you have heard it uh, i as i earlier said lm386 inbuilt circuit comes with a operational amplifier with a variable resistor actually so the output of the, this variable resistance depends this has to be calibrated Uh, uh with the uh, uh resistance of this speaker so hey, for example this lm386 specification says hey pick a 8 ohms speaker actually so that speaker which we took may or may not be 8 ohms so it may be some 7.5 or some uh, there may be variations right there is maybe uh, uh, there may be not 100% so this calibration part we were not knowing actually then you know we literally manually adjusted via a knob this resistance there was an option there will be an option in lm386 to adjust the knob of that lm386 that will vary the resistance and that make the speaker speak our information so that the first challenge we had okay the second part is the discussion of whether to have an uh, generate a voice ourselves or uh, having a tts a tts is something the text to speech actually so a uh, text to speech you, you know in the market there were libraries available for both of the combinations okay something you record and you add it to the library and it will say uh, it will be uh, uh, it will be given out as a uh, out, out out via speaker actually or something we write okay something we write as a okay, shall i uh, yes you can continue kalin okay oh cool so the second part we were discussing was this tds part okay okay actually so that is one of the places where uh, we faced uh, issues of how to which library to use and then we finally decided to have the text to speech which is highly uh, it it's its precision is good actually so rather than recording it with the noise so we went to do this uh, text to speech so basically a simple basic logic uh, of how this works is uh, you should have a wav file and uh, convert you there is an app called audacity audio player uh, pick it up and convert the sampling rate uh, since this esp32 is you know it's a low memory uh, have a sampling rate that is uh, very uh, high uh, very uh, something like that something to 8000 to 16000 yes sorry um i think kalin you can continue uh, that was some background noise yeah oh, okay good fine ah oh, okay so then the simple process is have this audacity audio player Uh, uh have the sampling rate set and then uh, convert that to again export as a c wave file and open with x editor so the two things which i said was add a city audio player and x editor and copy that x editor to paste it in this arduino our uh, code where it resides have that file there and play it so this is how we have done as a text to speech converter okay so the third point was the junk our uh, third point was this junk value you know uh, 
uh, our assumption was this uh, ultrasonic sensor will work absolutely fine so one uh, bottleneck we had was we what we done is we have completely closed this ultrasonic sensor uh, we we wanted to do an aggressive testing there so we completely uh, closed so it started throwing a junk value that junk value was in the range of a distance where an person can come in so that's the another problem we have faced actually so we have added in that uh, as of now with the uh, in the code level actually so that junk values we have to take care and the fourth part was okay we have this bigger circuit board uh, how to package them into a product where to place this where to have the speaker where to have this uh, uh, so since we are not that good uh, expert at design so we okay we had a uh, challenges at the packaging part as well so and the fourth point we, where everyone will face was the pin configuration if you start uh, buying an esp32 you should look for the specifications and then uh, uh, sorry the pin exact pin number and then go for the pin configuration section okay then will be you will be able to mark that the current uh, pin point actually so that's the one point which uh, we wanted to say so if you buy if you buy, if you are buying a esp32 or any module check the exact uh, product number uh, product number spin configuration that will uh, eliminate this challenge which we have faced actually so these are some of the challenges we have faced while setting up actually so till that any questions now people so that's all i have uh, uh, for this part so any questions on how we decided how we approached any other challenges something like that okay 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 maybe at the end of the session okay i will take i'm taking the snow maybe batmanavan you can uh, take for the real iot bigger part yeah yes so now adding to the cool features that already kalai and uh, sudhan has explained or what iot does right so the other part that we wanted to explore was how to so once we have a working piece of model we want to deploy it and we deployed it and what if we want to do some improvisation on top of it right so when we started exploring those things we started when we wanted to add a couple of more features we started facing all these problems uh, when we start when we wanted to integrate multiple things so the parallel processing what we are referring to here was when we try to uh, merge these server motors along with the audio processing libraries that we were using so whatever uh, kale was explaining was we were trying to generate a hex code for each of the text that we generated via a pcm module so that's a pulse code modulation code that we will use and it would be an 8 bit unsigned values so all those text whatever we are referring to will get converted into hex codes and the duration to complete a audio file will be um, will vary based on the text that we are giving and during that time frame the handshake also had to happen so when we wanted to process uh, two uh, when we wanted to process uh, two threads on a same on a single core that was a challenge for us when we wanted to do it so even though the esp32 is is a dual core processor and it is capable of running two separate threads on two different cores this was a very simple and a relatively easy task to be accomplished so that was one of the challenge that we faced and the limitation of an ultrasonic sensor see ultrasonic sensors sensors is going evidently going to emit uh, only pulse waves to a certain range right and it is not going to be an accurate because whatever we are doing is a hobbyist kind of uh, sensors and all the values are not going to be accurate and real as such so that was one of the things that we started facing with an ultrasonic sensors and um, um, and to overcome that we started uh, you know uh, adjusting the sensitivity of the sensors and having some um, potentiometer values along it so that we could fix on a certain uh, certain range saying that only after this point we start saying or we start playing the audio message or start doing the server motor action as a wave uh, that the grid bot does so that was the other work around we did for it and testing a new logic now what happens now if i instead of you know uh, let's take an example instead of the server motor waving it a full 90 degrees or a 120 degrees i just wanted to make it a little shorter and the message to be a much bigger one or a different one 
and what happens after I deploy it? I can't keep carrying the bot to my desk, plug it in and do an update, right? So um, that was another challenge for it. So this, the solution for point three is what we will be exploring in the next two slides, okay? And the size of the bot. Eventually when we designed it, we thought it will be, we, we would be able to accommodate in a small box, which uh, Sudan showed in the earlier videos. So once we started plugging in the components of it, see, um, uh, all these things can be bought or can be etched into a single PCB board. But when we are exploring and when we are looking at a hobbyist kind of a project, we still wanted to have you no know, bulky things so that uh, we can experiment around it. So the size of the bot also was you know kind of a challenge and the placement of the components inside the box, which uh, relatively um, needs to be much precise so that the bot doesn't look very bulky and it's even appealing to the eye. So that is one of the thing that we would still want to do. The size of the bot needs to be optimized. The product should look cool enough. Like uh, when you saw the earlier slides where we, we had a certain expectation and we just ended up with a box saying something or a box just playing some you know audio messages as such. So that is something in progress for us. We are still designing the bot and how the visual of the bot should uh, be an, an appealing to a person who interacts with the bot also. Right. So we should have a person who, you know, comes back to the bot, feels like, okay, this is fun and let me start interacting with the bot. So that is something that we're still working on. Now, uh, elaborating on the point three. So how we worked around and what is the solution that we came up with? So, uh, so then can we go to the next slide? So um, this was one of the solution or the solution that we are currently having at hand right now. So that is called as the OTA. And that is the over the air update uh, that we're trying to push to the bots. So what eventually happens is through our smartphones in our mobile setup boxes, all the equipments that we have, let's take for Alexa or anything that we have, right? We do receive updates over the internet. The, even though the bots are physically placed or the devices are physically purchased by consumers, the companies are still able to push their updates over a, uh, over a wireless interface and still your device works as, as if it has got a new update. You, do, you really didn't have to plug it into any of the networks without any cables as such, but still you are able to, um, you know, get the updates and all the cool features that the company wants to push it to. So how that happens is something, um, a concept called over the air update, wherein we push the firmware updates as such, not just the uh, app updates. Like, um, it's not like you just update a candy crusher, right? When an iPhone goes through an update, it takes a lot of time. So that means they eventually the firmware is getting rebooted and the code that the, um, that the vendor is providing or the vendor is pushing needs to be built from scratch or whatever was there uh, earlier. So uh, when we look at the microcontroller space, there is something called as a program data and there is something called as a user data. The user data is still going to be changed. No one is going to touch it, even if there's a firmware update, but the program data is going to get overridden with the new updates that the vendor is trying to push through. So we wanted to do something similar to that. So uh, even though it was through a wireless interface and all this thing on all these features looked cool, the real purpose was it was difficult for us to work from for us to walk from the table to the you know welcome desk chair and plug in the cable and push the update each of the time. So one laziness left to exploring something else. And yes, we do have an OT update for this bot, wherein we are remotely able to push uh, firmware updates as well as uh, file updates through the bot anywhere over the internet. And still it is not exposed outside, but yeah, over a network it can be achieved and it is still working in the same way only. Uh, can you go to the next slide? So So what happens over here is any device that needs an firmware update to happen over the internet or over the air needs to have a Wi-Fi module or some Wi-Fi wireless interface. It's not necessarily not by a Wi-Fi module. It can be a CB module or it can be a you know, the trivial FTP transfer. Anything that works is fine for the uh, firmware update to happen. And all these things needs to happen. Uh, it, it's not like the bot has some you know cool host. OS or something which you know checks for an update and then pulls it, or we keep the updated version or the updated OS on a repository somewhere that checks for the versions and then pulls it. We are manually going to push the update through an interface. So for that we started, we ended up creating a web interface. So the uh, so the ESP32 is capable of running a web server on its own, and through the web server we were still able to push the bin files for it. So for that we started using the async web servers. So that was much literally quicker and uh, it was more reliable when it was trying to register with the network and you know, trying to give us this interface. 
was more reliable and yes we did achieve that and we are now uploading the codes to the bot from a, in, a, in a remote fashion only we are no longer connecting the uh, our devices the development kit or our laptops as such to the bot to you know push each of the updates as well. and this is a rough view of how the ui looks so with the web interface and you know um, the former uh, the binary files to be updated this is how the ui looks and we do have an option to update the um, firmware alone i mean to say the program space the program data alone to be updated or in a file system where you just want to you know uh, replace a certain json from where the um, uh, or you, you if you really want to change the greeting message for the bot just need to push an updated json and it starts reading it it starts converting the text to a audio and start saying that as such so um the, the third point that we faced we were able to close it with this kind of an uh, setup that is over here update and uh, for the future thing uh, then the next slide so as a part of the next next step that we are planning to do is you know um officially syncing some calendars so that when a person comes in and you know um, interacts with the bot we tell them okay what is there in the calendar for the day or like uh, or any public events that is happening that is there in their calendar or in a publicly shared calendar we can sync it up with the calendar and tell them like okay we have a geek, uh, geek night session tonight at 6 o'clock or something like that and the second part that we are planning to do is a face detection thing wherein it detects that okay that a uh, really a person has come currently you just currently with the ultrasonic sensor alone you can just you know in this disturb the signal and you know mock it like physically a person has come but ne that necessarily may not be an actual person you know? so now the next part would be to integrate a face detection part um face recognition is something that we are still you know um having quite a lot of heated debates on that whether we want to do uh, face recognition or not but face detection is something that we have in plan for the next version of this bot uh, next slide sir Yes. So this is how our board currently looks at in the office, and you know it has been a companion for our uh, security who you know tends to play with this bot also when he's bored in his desk. So, and for the Creed Bot 10 version, we do have certain things planned for it, and as and when we implement it, we'll be releasing an updates along the line. Um, that's it. I have from my end. Um, so then I think we are done. So you have any questions about the greed bot or uh, uh, anything in particular, we can discuss it uh, for now. Uh, really extremely sorry for uh, too much of extra time. And uh, yeah, I think it's worth it actually. Okay. Any other questions or anything you want to discuss right now? Anybody? No? Is there any starter kit uh, like you said that EP32? Yeah. yeah, but that is, chip itself is not enough, right? You need some wires, you need some LEDs and all those things. Is there any starter kit which comes with the bundle? Uh, bundle, yeah, there are the ready-made start starter kits available in Amazon as well with the ESP32. Uh, that comes with a different sensor, like a five to seven different sensors uh, with uh, jumper wires and all those things. Uh, but it depends upon the use case, right? If you want to tinker uh, about the uh, different sensors and if you want to kickstart with the landing, that's good. That's enough actually. So if you have uh, some use case or if you have some problems to solve, then we have we have to go for a different uh, set of uh, uh, like, like the concentrator one. So what are the different sensors, uh, the particular sensor we have to use? Why we need to use it? Okay. What are the different uh, uh, pros and cons of the particular sensor? Are there any alternative sensor for that one? So if you are going to solve some problem that need a detailed uh, study actually to before getting into the action, right? But if you want to tinker with a different thing, I think uh, the Amazon uh, proper uh, ESP32 development uh, kit is enough. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, to add, uh, if you are starting from very basic, you know, Almost all ESP32 development team, uh, kit comes with the inbuilt LED actually. So you mm -hmm. can test that LED part. So you can, it's good to go with an ESP32 actually. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So any feedback for us or anything you can, you want to, uh, something you think uh, this can be improved 
uh, something like that you can able to share it that uh, uh, let's let's hope uh, we close it by 655 three more minutes you okay. can able to share any feedback <laughs> yeah so uh, for that so then we are actually planning to circulate a feedback form so okay I cool then. okay okay yeah okay uh, so uh, a small request to the participants here so i'll circulate that feedback form on the zoom chat and i request you all to fill in that form so it would be very helpful to course correct in the upcoming sessions as well so because we are trying this new uh, parallel talks in breakout rooms for the first time and we are uh, sincerely sorry for the previous meeting ending abruptly and we'll make sure that it doesn't happen in the future uh, give me a second i'll circulate the feedback form uh, you are in and uh, thanks a lot for the session so then padmanabhan and kalai it was really interactive and very informative and i hope everyone here felt the same as well and uh, if you have any further question folks you can uh, connect with us or even with so then uh, any time if you want to you know uh, explore more on iot Sure thing. Actually, I shared that uh, uh, group as well. This is a uh, uh, the the uh, link to join IoT group. Uh, we usually post a lot of things like uh, the constant projects and what is currently going on now, and what are the different projects we are uh, building. So all the things will be posted in posted over there, and uh, it's really up to date. So and we usually have a monthly workshop as well. So next time, uh, let me post it for the whole India. uh and uh, you can able to join from anywhere so we plan to have it as a hybrid uh yeah the we actually successfully have one workshop hybrid one person joined from mumbai and uh, we see is very patient actually <laughs> cool thanks thank you sudhin yeah okay hey and i think we are done with our session for today thanks everyone for taking your time and joining us this evening Uh, thank you harni for uh, having this wonderful session thank you thanks a lot thank everyone you. yeah okay